So that's about horse height. So if you're okay. on that top step, you're going to notice that that angle is quite a bit different. Oh, yeah. Remember to relax. Good. That was good. That's a nice swing, actually. Ah! Ready? Oh. Yeah! Oh. Woo <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Two hours north of Casper, across the Wyoming foothills, you'll find a frontier town with something truly amazing just below the surface. It's home to the largest mineral hot springs anywhere in the world. Welcome to Thermopolis, Wyoming. Population just 2,725. It's a town built quite literally on a melting pot of boiling water, rich sediment, terry bathrobes, and dinosaur bones. Welcome to the very wettest part of the wild, wild west. I'm Dylan Thuris, reporting for Atlas Obscura, and this is Small Town Big Story. Where are we? We're at the Big Spring in Hot Springs State Park in Thermopolis, Wyoming. Can you smell it? Oh, I can smell it. That oh. is a strong sulfur scent. If you notice, there's color to the spring. Yeah. Oh. And the color is based on how hot the water is. It's not. Ooh, that is a very hot bath. That yeah. is like a bath you draw for yourself, and then you're like, oh, I gotta wait for this yeah. to cool off. Yeah, that, that 127 it, degrees is what it is. Ooh. Yeah. Where is this water bubbles up from somewhere? Why like, is the water hot? Yeah, that's, that's my a question. Big Why? question. <laughs> yeah. That's right. The water originates in the mountains about uh, 20 miles south of us. Okay. The water is confined in an aquifer where there's a confining layer on top and a confining layer underneath. Oh, so it's flowing down this rock layer, but it's flowing way deep into the earth. Into the earth. The farther you go down into the earth, the hotter it gets. Wow. Yep. Look at this whole cake icing landscape. Yeah, that's, yeah, you're right. It's just absolutely gorgeous. This is very reminiscent of uh, Yellowstone. Yeah. yeah. It's warm. It's warm, but it's nice. It's hot tub temperature. So Thermopolis is famous for its hot springs, and the source of them is right at the top of that mountain over there. And they flow down to multiple different areas, different pools, operations you can go and soak in. So you can soak in the original kind of historic free one, you can soak in one which has got things to jump off of and slides to go down. There's a lot of different ways to experience the hot springs in Thermopolis. Do you soak? Three to four times a week. Three to four times a week. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty often. Mm -hmm. How often do you soak? Daily, if possible. Oh, so you really like this is a really important part of your life. Yeah. Why? Because I've got a very intense injury that I'm healing. Oh, really? And this helps with that. Very much. Wyoming's got a culture of hot springs, but there are some hot spring towns that aren't. That it's not a mineral hot spring. It comes out very hot. It's great during the winter because there's nothing like sitting out here soaking and have it snowing on you. It's pretty nice. That seems really magical. People use it for all kinds of stuff. They come, they hang out, they have fun, they relax. It provides a lot of different value to a lot of different people for different reasons. It's cool to see. Right now, we are sitting in the main gallery of the Wyoming Dinosaur Center and dig sites. Um, I have a lot of friends behind me, including Stan the T-Rex, uh, Mary the Triceratops, Jimbo the Supersaurus, and a bunch of other dinosaurs that we have here. There is a distant but distinct relationship that draws the dinosaur bones that we find at our dig sites to the hot springs that the town of Thermopolis is named for, and that is the mountains. We have mountains south of town that 
helped to uplift the dinosaur bones to where they are today, where we can see them exposed and dig them out. What makes the Wyoming Dinosaur Center really unique is that we are located within two and a half miles of the dig sites. So what are you guys actually digging for here? This is actually one of our oldest dig sites. It uh -huh. is called Foot Site. It has mainly Diplodocus bones, so mm. up to 85 foot long giant sor plant eating sauropod. We have found over 800 bones at this single dig site. We allow people of all ages to come out and work at these dig sites. It is not very common that dig sites are open to the public. Everything you can see here, you can touch, you can find things that no one has ever seen before. You have an entire Diplodocus femur laying right there. And then additionally, we found the uh, tibia mm. and the fibula that match up right, this with is, this femur. This is the bottom mm -hmm. part of the leg and the top mm -hmm. part of the leg here. Mm -hmm. The bone that I was just dusting, that was a dinosaur's like leg. At one point, it walked around, it ate some trees, it died and ended up here. And 150 million years later, I'm there like sweeping it off. What I'm coming to understand is just how geologically layered this place is. Like quite literally layers of geological and human experience, like all stacked up together. That's wild. The Wyoming Dinosaur Center's dig sites are located on the Warm Springs Ranch south of town, which is owned and operated by a rancher. So the ranchers do us a big favor because they're the ones that are out in the plains, in the prairie, looking for cattle, and they're the ones that will find new things. Moving to Wyoming was actually my idea. Our ranch is special because we do regenerative agriculture. It's a kind of a new way of thinking about things, and so it's about protecting the soil and regenerating grasslands and storing carbon and doing all kinds of really awesome stuff that really harkens back to the old ways of doing things, non-chemical, non-industrial, non-subsidized. I mean, I imagine 50 years ago, if I told people, hey, we're gonna give tours of our farm, everybody would go, well, why? But now there's a longer and longer disconnect between the actual stuff on your plate and how or why it gets to you. So people have this great desire to go connect with the farm and the farmer again. And so agritourism is a wonderful way to do that. Well, this is Billy. She's a little cattle dog that we're raising up and we want her to sniff a cow for the first time. She's gonna chase cows, but in order to do that, to excite that natural instinct, she has to know what that scent is. Two days from now, we've gotta go get some cows from out in the additional pasture beyond where we are here. And we need Dylan's help grabbing those cows so we can bring them in and let little Billy here get her first scent of a cow. What are some of the things we're gonna be doing here today? We might have you ride some animals. We might have you throw some ropes. Mm -hmm. I've never ridden a horse before. Oh. Well, it's gonna be really <laughs> fun. <laughs> we should have you be, uh, roping and riding by the end of the day. Then. Sure, should be fine, no problem. <laughs> So you want to just let it go. Nice. We have an old Traeger grill. Okay. It looks so much like a cat. It does. So what we're doing then is we're effectively just going to release and try to aim for that target. See, and that would hey. grab the neck, and then we'd dally that off on our saddle. Yeah, so let's get that swing going. Ready? Yep. Go for it. Nice. Nice. So that's about horse height. So if you're on that top step, Dylan, you're gonna notice that that angle is quite a bit different. Oh yeah. Remember to relax. Good, that was good. That, that would've front. got the front legs. Front. That's a nice swing, actually. Ah! Ready? Oh. Yeah! Oh. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! You know, I'm getting a feel for it. The thing is, is it's one thing to do this standing on a little step ladder throwing it at a grill. I think it's a pretty different thing to be doing all this while you're riding a horse and there's like the object that you're trying to lasso is moving. But yeah, step by step, step by step. This is Tommy. This is Tommy. So this hand uh -huh. is gonna come up here on okay. the horn. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is so super can... hard. Okay, seriously. Oh, 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 oh. you're good. 
Hey. You know, he's a horse, so he's got a little bit of a mind of his own of where he wants to go. It's like, he'll kind of drift in one direction or another. But like, when I'm like, all right, bud, let's turn this way. We're going this way. I so what'll them. happen is, these calves will stay calm until we get inside their flight zone. Okay. Okay, and then let's move in on them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dylan, you're gonna have the best luck if we walk up to those calves nice and calm. All right. Oh! <laughs> oh! That was close. Yeah, you almost had it. I wasn't sure how I'd do actually riding the horse, but this Tommy is the best. I don't know, I think I was made for this. Like, in another life, born to ride, baby. All right, here, let's go. <laughs> right now, I'm the president of the uh, Hot Springs County Pioneer Association. Okay. And our objective is to preserve this environment. The sign on that hill up there, it says world's largest mineral hot springs. Yeah. I painted that the last time. Oh, you did? 6,000 square feet of paint, man. So you were up there on the hillside? With a backpack. Like... <laughs> oh. Backpack and paint. What, yeah. do, what do you think makes Thermopolis so special? You just look at the landscape around here. You don't see that anywhere else. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's other places with hot springs, but not like this. But not like this, yeah. We've got the outlaw history, and we've got the cowboy history. We've got the Native American history. Yeah. We've got... Ge you uh, got dinosaur history. We got, we got it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what can you tell me about what we're going to see? We're going to be seeing petroglyphs. The Native Americans saw a cliff. They would pick up a, a rock or a horn or something and start pecking and, and riding into these cliffs. There's almost 500 individual petroglyphs in this one little little area. Right here, we see some houses. Now, you asked how old some of these petroglyphs are. There are clues just based on what they are. Right, what's if you been see a house, drawn. Chances are that was not drawn a thousand years ago. Right, <laughs> so, right. It's a, it feels a little modern. <laughs> yeah, so this was probably done in the 1800s. This is a unique panel right here. With the, with the bird. It's got the Thunderbird. The Thunderbird is really unique. That. The little one, like a person holding, what are they've got? It's oh, okay. like they've got a little something when, on when, a leash. When I was a little girl, we called that one Olive Oil Walking Her Dog. Yeah. Well, we have since been out here with uh, some Native Americans, and who I happened to mention, I said, Oh, I'm so, this looks like Olive. He says, No, that's a prisoner tied to a rock. Oh. Which makes a lot more that's sense. That's a wildly different interpretation of that. Everything from the birth of agriculture. <laughs> to animal domestication, to yeah. the Western movement of peoples through this area in the 1800s. I mean, it's all sort it's of all... here, and it's like, it's hard to, to take in the scope. This is permanent. Computers, letters, paper. They could be burned, lost. Technology can go away. This is not going away. We are uh, back at the ranch. Today's the day where we get back on those horses, we leave that little pen, we actually go out into the environment, ride around and, and see what happens. The cows are back in here. Let's go herd some cattle. The cattle are coming our way now. Try to keep him there, ho, oh, oh. Good girl. Coming back, Eve! Yep, I see him. We're gonna move okay. and block these gaps and he's gonna push them up this way. Yeah. Help, help. Come on, let's go. Help. Help. Not gonna go too far because I don't want to scare him, but. Yeah, maybe stop. Whoa. Whoa. Good. Hey, hey, hey. There they go. Once they were in a very flat, open pasture. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. You're in. Yeah. You are in. Yeah. If, uh, if they want to be in slightly more rough terrain, okay. We'll see. <laughs> then yeah. I hand it off to you. 
I really feel like there were a couple points at which if we didn't have that third rider, it just would have been a whole lot more work, and I appreciate it. I just had to be a moving wall, and that's, yes, that's yes. the thing I could and do. And that's really what you're doing, is you're just affecting their behavior, and you just yeah. sort of have to predict where do I need to be to affect the behavior I want. Yeah. All right, All looks right. like we got nice calm cows, that's good. Yeah. And we're gonna let her scent. Do you see that nose goes right in there? Yeah. This is tough work. You got to be out there. You're running into brush. You're right. moving fast on a horse. How do you how do you relax? Well, I'll tell you one of the best things you can do, and we've got it right here, is go dip in a hot spring. I thought that might be the yeah. answer. Yeah. I think that could be on the. You, you uh, think we uh, earned I th it? I think we could do it. Yeah, I think we earned it. After a long day on the ranch, out on the horse herding cattle, it's time to relax. What I think is so interesting is just the variation of stuff that I was able to do here. Dig for dinosaur bones to go and look at art that's 10,000 years old. You can ride a horse across the landscape and herd some cattle. It, it does not matter how deep you dig in this town. You are gonna find something incredible. Thermopolis is the quintessential small western town. I mean, Butch Cassidy used to go there and drink. I mean, you kind of can't get any more western cool than that. Thermopolis is all about the landscape, the weather, the river, the hot springs. You come here to enjoy nature. The people that live in Thermopolis are a very close-knit bunch. They want to have in as many people as we can in order to expose the world to what unique features we have to offer.